Come on, son. Let's go. You're coming, Dad. Bro, you should ask your parents if you can come over. Right, I'll meet you in the car then. A few moments later. I've had my share of get back up again. Kia ora, tēnā koutou katoa i te iwi, nau mai, haru mai ki rotu i tēnei whare. I'm Adam Blair. And I'm Madison Bartlett, and welcome to a new season of The Ditch. Let's check out what's coming up on episode one. We kickstart the season with a tongue and latte with the Hopoaris in Manly. You ready for some uncleanness? <laughs> Maraki Amua from Palmy gives us an exclusive tour of the dog's whare. <laughs> Plus find out why one of the game's biggest names almost missed his flight. Big night. No, 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 all right, no, all right, no. <laughs> one job, my bro, one job. What an exciting lineup, man. I can't wait to have Ronnie on the show. Ronnie, is it? Are you two mates? Don't be jealous. Oh, sorry about it. What better way to start the first ever Sorry About It segment for 2023 by just highlighting the mean as tries. He's left Val Holmes in the dust. Vanilla's tongue and stallion right there. Sorry about it. Latrell and Geordie Raps get the dub against the Broncos and the Dolphins. Quick hands, Chris. Out for Jordan Rapala! The man who made sure they kept possession finishes. I'm sure this fella Jake Avarillo is from up north. Surely my cut. Jake Avarillo! Speed, strength, balance, everything! I'd burn him any day. Along the ground, it's going to be a try! It's Brandon Waker. And finally, the highlight of the season so far. One of Adam's 12 clubs he played for. The mighty West Tigers did the unthinkable. Just have a listen. 273 days of misery are over. Yeah, go the Tigers. Love those guys. Whatever, Adam. Sorry about it, those are some talented athletes. And speaking of talented athletes, we caught up with NRLW star Bunny Hopoari, daughter of the one and only John Hopoari. <laughs> the ditch? The ditch. Okay. The ditch. The ditch. That's how you guys say it. The ditch. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gross Bunny Hopoari, and you're watching The Ditch. McGregor, they're on the charge again here. They see McGregor through, gets a pass on the inside, and away they go through Hopalade. I love this game. I love the, the contact. I love the environment around it. I love the friends that I make out of it. It's such a beautiful community to play. She pops it out to Hopalade, and Hopalade keeps going. I started playing because my dad was short in numbers for the boys team in under 11s. He just asked me to jump in. I had no idea how to play, but you know, got the hang of it after. I loved it when I first touched the ball. Dad's at every single game. You know, a lot of pressure when I know he's at my games. But um, my mum didn't like it at the start. She thought it was a boy's sport. She didn't like me getting hurt on the field, but mum's always there as well. I've heard a lot of funny stories about my dad, but usually going out, I try to keep my last name on a download on anyone to know, oh, you're Hopper's daughter. Like, I, it'll be nice to be known as, oh, you're funny, not just Hopper's daughter. But, you know, my dad, yeah, he's the best. I've always been a manly girl. I've, Supported Manly from day one. Hubbardy scores for Manly. My brother Will, he he was always my role model, the person I looked up to. He was just the way he was on and off the field, physically and mentally. He was just everything I wanted to be. Because I'm surrounded by my seven brothers, you know, it's it's always been rugby league. We're a rugby league family, so we uh, bleed and breathe all of that. So growing up, you know, we used to always play a lot of um, footy in the backyard. I used to get ragged over all my brothers, but you know, you're not allowed to cry. <laughs> so you just get back up and go again and keep going, yeah. And I learned to love 
love, love this sport. Bursting through his hopper white tape. She's got Maynard on her shoulder. Doesn't need Maynard. The big fend and will bolt towards the line. I felt like um, growing up in, in football, when, whenever there was trials or anything, they'd be like, oh, you're a hopper whitey, you must be good. And I just you now felt like, oh, just because I'm a hopper whitey, like, I can prove, it uh, doesn't mean I'm good. Like, I'll have to, have to be here to prove myself. But, you know, it would be good to make my own name and not just live off the Hopawati kind of legacy, yeah. Wow, what an amazing story and a very talented family. Looking forward to seeing Bunny in the NRLW this year and maybe bumping off my friend next to me here. To be honest, she'll probably bump all of us off. All of us? Including you. Yep. Anyway, enough about us getting bumped off. We're very privileged to have in the studio today our first guest for 2023. Welcome to the studio, all the way from Cronulla Sharks, Ronaldo Mulitalo. Welcome to the Fuddy. Thanks for having me, fam. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, so we heard you nearly missed your flight. Yeah, well, we had a bye weekend, so I enjoyed ourselves a little bit. And then obviously they came and told us, gave us to get on, touch on the shoulder. It's time to get on the flight. So big here now. Big night. No, no, no. All right, no. All right, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can tell us. You can tell chill, us the story. Night, chill, night, chill, night. Right, you're a bit of a character out on the field, bro. How do you uh, bring that out of yourself, and what do you think about when you go into a game, bro? For me, it's uh, obviously you. You're being a competitor yourself as well as you. Um, you know, we when you get on the field, bro, it's all bits off for me. Like it's all or nothing. I just see it as that. I'm not friends with anyone. Um, I care about the 18 blokes that have got the same jersey as me, and. Uh, I care nothing more about what they think and um, yeah, I just go after whatever it is. Whether it's a mental bat battle or a physical battle, I just try to win whatever it is. I take everything, every inch of grass, you know, and uh, sometimes I get too heated, but that's, that's how I am and that's how I want to play the game. Love it. Matty, both of you guys are wingers. Wingers, <laughs> like, I'm not going to say too much about wingers <laughs> because m my mindset is wingers score tries, wingers stop tries. Is there anything else to a winger's job? What are you oh. trying to say? We don't do anything? <laughs> no, nah, well, I'm asking Ronaldo. <laughs> no, nah, like, obviously, it's a, it's a different game. Nah, I always laugh because the prop always gives me a bit of stick about, you know, how, how we are. Um, but obviously, I'm a loud mouth. I'm all the way on the side. Me and the touchy have the same job. Just stand there, look, look good and wave the flag. But no, nah, as, as much as I can, I try and get into it. I love that mix. I love that face-to-face -face action. And, and whenever I can and get into that battle or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I try, I try and get into it. I love it. And when you were growing up, did you think that, you know, a South Auckland boy was going to be the um, household name in the Cronulla Sharks? Nah, like I, um, obviously a very, very privileged, you know, at, at the moment. And you know, I come from South Auckland and Otara has always been home for me. It's home away from home. And uh, I just felt like, you know, that's, that's what built my character. and. I live right next door to Otara Scorpions, so um, all the boys will rally around and we'll all go around to the park and, and enjoy a bit of footy and backyard footy and uh, nothing's better than backyard footy, I guess. The bakeries out there aren't too bad either, eh? Nah, they're mean. I reckon they're better than everyone else, but nah, we're, I love the pies around there. It's probably a bad thing for all of us. What, what's the favourite? What's the go-to pie? Uh, I reckon I, I love a steak and mushroom. Steak and mushroom? I love, love a mushroom pie, like keen as on a mushroom pie, but... Uh, it wouldn't mind, don't mind a bacon and egg. We had a bacon and egg, and I made a mess of myself this morning, so I had to change up the clothing. But it was all good. <laughs> but we've we've all got hobbies outside of rugby league. What are your What are some of your hobbies? Love gaming, bro. Like I'm a mad gamer. PlayStation. Play, nah, PC. So I'm a, one of those guys, and my fingers start getting handy <laughs> on, on the keyboard. So now you look nervous. That's me. why your hands are wiggling. Yeah, the no, fingers. No, is that just, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just the gaming just, fingers? fingers broken, <laughs> it's not swinging. It's just the fingers are broken. So. No, nah, but yeah, I love gaming. It's a, it's a way of myself getting away from the game. Obviously, you know, like criticism and, you know, you get all the other stuff that come with footy and um, it's just my way of escaping it all and, um, yeah, just being a child at, at one point in my life. So I enjoy that. Um, my family understand that. My partner does too, so she just lets me do my thing. How many hours? Bro, I reckon I'll, I'll spend easily eight hours, I reckon. What, a day? A day, easily. Brush it, I just love that. That's I'll just escape it <laughs> after the game. I'm done. Go I'm, in the back cave. Go in the back cave and I'm gone. Kia ora, my name is Maraki Aumua. Malolele, my name is Ale Golasimi Jones. Oh. We play HD ball for the Canary Bulldogs. Come check out our home away from home. 
So uh, this is the dog's house where we uh, stay and AJ likes to keep his cricket helmets but I just come through here. Uh, yeah, so this is like the York Street Hall of Fame. Um, all the famous NRL players um, who lived in this house and that. And yeah, um, some of them from New Zealand, where we come from. Isaac Loop, Sonny Bill Williams, and all that. Raymond, and um, yeah, hopefully one day our name can be up there. Hey, much. <laughs> Yeah, just coming from the Hall of Fame, coming into the kitchen where I do all the cooking for the boys. Um, AJ likes to clean, or oh, he thinks he does. Yeah. So we'll test him, eh? What's in that um, cupboard there? Oh, frying pan. Oh, yeah, I know because I cleaned it last night, eh? But yeah, we like we like to test our brains, um, have fun playing chess and that. I beat all the boys. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, these are the bathrooms, but I um, don't want to show you it eh, because we don't like to show off how clean it is in that. So yeah, this is my room, my humble abode. Um, in the corner there is where I like to keep my Bible. There's a bit of washing down there, but um, yeah, otherwise this is where the magic happens. Magic! <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different experience, you know, having mum, dad, that moral support, um, I guess. Just coming into this new environment was a big, big experience for me. But having AJ here, just someone else from back home that I could talk to, um, uh, yeah, just really helped me. And then, uh, yeah, we're all tied with the boys now, so. I know, like, sometimes when I'm homesick, you know, crying in my room and that, I just go into Mudd's room and we just have, like, talks about back home. He reminds me of home so much. And, like, we just talk about, like, the bakery pies we miss, all the stuff and NZ, you know. These experiences you have here where things aren't going your way and some days aren't your day. <laughs> it's hard, eh? It's too ball for the Canterbury Bricks. I guess when you have brothers in here like AJ, just to push you and um, help you through those tough times, because um, there's definitely um, tough times. I guess when those times happen, um, you just gotta, it's okay to cry, but um, yeah, you just gotta talk to your brothers. Um, and yeah, it'll help you through those, those experiences. What was it like moving away from your family at such a young age? Yeah, it was hard. Um, I still struggle with it a bit. Like, you know, as we all do, we all got to sacrifice a little bit. And that's why I love rugby league is that you know, we all got a little story to tell. And my mom just said, you know, one day asked me and my twin brother if you're keen to get up and leave um, and just go chase our dream. And you know, she's asking, 10 year old boys uh, if they're keen to go chase their dream and I think that's crazy you know what I mean I looked at it, look back at it now and think you're crazy um, but yeah she she just said oh if you if your boys are willing to be serious about it then we'll move to Australia and uh, that's all it took made our move uh, to Ipswich uh, in Brisbane and um, obviously very lucky to have you know, family around there as well and um, just learnt my craft there built myself and you know, in 2014, 15, uh, Sharks came knocking on the door. Mum wasn't real keen on me going as a 16-year-old boy, younger than that, uh, to go, you know, learn my craft in Cronulla. So she just told me, you know, plug away and up switch until you graduate. So after I graduated, literally two days after I graduated, I was on a plane out to Cronulla. It was funny because all the boys were at schoolies and you know, I, was, I was running in Sandhills in Cronulla and it just made no sense to me at that time, you know, I was, I was, I was pretty off it. I was, you know, boys were sending me videos of them drinking and carrying on, you know, as you do. And you know, I used to sit there and just call my mum and go, why am I even doing this? Like, I'm running this hill and tomorrow and the boys are out drinking and I should be doing that. And that's what teenagers do, right? And they enjoy themselves. And um, yeah, and then obviously made my way to Cronulla and I struggled there really bad. I feel like the first year, the first two years, I, no, I didn't like Sydney, it's too fast for me. And you go from New Zealand to Brisbane, it's you know, really slow. And you go to Sydney, it's just all fast paced. And I struggled really bad trying to, you know, and what made it worse was, you know, I come from a young Pacifica family and then I, I'm living with, living with a, you know Australian family and their customs and what, how they live are just two total different things of how I live my life and I, I struggled I'm trying to adapt to that and I had to find ways to you know, meet them halfway and they had to find ways to meet me halfway so um, got really homesick there a couple of times and um, 
Uh, I had so many good people around me to make sure that does it, you know, to show me that light at the end of the tunnel. And um, I was just really grateful that I had that kind of support system. Your debut, how how important was that day for you and your family, your mum included? My family didn't even know I was going to debut. I was, I was 18 <laughs> man, so I was like, yeah, free holiday. Like, I was sitting in the Qantas lounge, like, what's this? Trying everything, <laughs> carrying on. I was, when I got first told, I was like, oh, you're 18 man. I rocked up and um, I was like, oh, you're good in the lounge. I was like, yeah, I'm living that life. Um, I made it, I cracked it. And I was just like, yeah. Just sitting in the lounge, I was I drinking all the freaking whatever I could, like, um, all the fizzies in there, I was in the fans, I was like, yeah, this is cool as, you're ordering whatever I could. And then my family, they knew I was 18 man, so they, I was at Suncorp. And then, yeah, they just said, oh, we'll, we'll all get tickets just in case. So I had about 30 family members there. I didn't even know I was going to debut. I didn't know either. And then and we were warming up, they just said, oh, we'll come just in case. And I was in the warm up and that. And Josh Dugan pulled out, like last minute, I was in the shower. I went, I went into the shed and I was like, yeah. Yeah, my job's done. <laughs> Got like the man a little bit. I, yeah, you know, he just he got a bit of taste of it. Started showering up, and the trainer came in and he's like, "Bro, get your gear on. You're playing." And I said, "Nah, this, yeah, yeah. what are you talking about?" And he's like, "Just do. You just pulled out." I said, "What?" And he goes, "Yeah, you're playing. You're on." And I said, "Oh." So I raced out of the shower, bro. Soap, everything. <laughs> I was trying to dry myself. I was running out, trying to dry myself, and trying to find my kit in the bag because I chucked it all in the bag, and I was trying to grab my kit out, put it on. Before I knew it, I was standing there, arms of Shawnee, singing the national anthems of New Zealand and, and Australia. And I just laugh, I'm like, and then they saw me run out and they were like, oh, he's actually playing. <laughs> so I was, I was lucky, man. I had you know, all my family members there and um, I look back at my old girl and I'm just, I'm just really happy that she got that satisfaction and you know, was sacrificing all that. I guess you probably didn't have the chance to be nervous then because you didn't really know that you were going to debut. Do you prefer that or would you prefer to have known? Nah, I'm different. Like, I like preparing. I love making sure that I leave every stone unturned. And I look back at it now and I just feel like, you know, obviously I was an 18, 19 year old kid and naive as enjoying like being around these superstars of the game. And I just thought, you know, I'll get away with everything. And, Obviously, that wasn't the case. I had the, probably the worst debut I've ever had, like anyone's ever seen. I was, <laughs> dropped, dropped the first ball? Yeah, dropped, <laughs> dropped the first ball, oh, dropped that, the second, that, that third hasn't, That hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So oh, yeah, my bad, my bad, man. Kiko, yeah. you tell the yeah, story, you tell yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the boys always give me a like, stick about it. They're like, oh, you're still dropping balls. I'm like, oh, <laughs> good, bro. Don't worry about it. But, uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm totally different. Like, I, I want to prepare for things, so... Um, I didn't get much time. I remember, like, obviously when I got told from the time I got my kit on, Josh Dugan was upset. I walked and I just saw all the pre-workout. Never take pre-workout <laughs> ever in my life. Three I just scoops. Saw, I saw four that I set up. You know how they set it all yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, this is mine. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Before I know, I was buzzing. I was like, I was seeing stars. I was like, Fuck. <laughs> uh, I'm just like, really, sh I'm rattled as. I'm like, well, what's going on? And it's an Anzac round in Suncorp Stadium. If yeah. anyone's mm. played there, that's where it's on. Like, you know, you're in Suncorp because it's a great atmosphere. And, but I look back at it now, such a, you know, such a good learning curve for myself. And I, I'm glad I went through that, I guess. So you talked about living with, you know, uh, Australian family. Uh, there's lots of Pacific Island Māori boys at the Sharks. How did that help? Well, what was it like? What's it like being around that? It's funny because it, it was never like that. Like you look at Cronulla teams and they never had you know, a strong Pacific and Māori um, talent in it. You know, it's always been the typical Australian people, and that's all good. But 
Uh, obviously, it's been changing a fair bit lately, and um, uh, I just I'm very lucky that I you know got a good crop of boys that come through, and um, yeah, we're just you know, all we're all running the same race, and it, it feels like that. And any time I've had a hard time, or you know, I've struggled at home, or I'm homesick, I always buzz one of the boys, um, and just you know we all get together and. We said this thing with Jason Bakuya, who who was at the club, and he, he had a thing called Iron Squad, um, which was you know, mainly dominated by Pacifica boys that are um, and Maori boys that are into church, and we all did that together and enjoyed that. And so yeah, but the the boys in that they always remind me of home, so it feels like a bit of homes with me at training, and um, you know, we you know what we're like. Banter doesn't fall short with all of us, and we all go at each other. And no one's a and you know you can't be a citizen there. You got to get into it, or you, know, you get a sink or swim. So um, yeah, I enjoy that, and you know, I'm just like I said, I've been very, very lucky to have a good group of boys around me. Bro, speaking about home, and you're talking about how much of a Kiwi you are. We want to see if you're actually a Kiwi, and doing a manu <laughs> is something that we pride ourselves on as Kiwis. The last fellow that came in here, Alex Glenn, was absolute poo. <laughs> talked up, talked it up like he was the man. Went out there. Poo, nothing. It was like a belly flop. Uh, We're going to test you out. I'm keen, I'm keen. Obviously, learn my craft in Oats, how very, so I'm keen to represent my, my hood and come out and show you what I got. Mate. What's up, fam? I'm Anari Muitalo from the Canal Sharks, representing my hood, 274. Oats, this one's for you, baby. You're welcome. Let's go. I like you. I my baby. I was saying, 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 I was saying,